Frost is arguably one of the most important and influential bands in the world of metal. They are considered a key link in the development of many of the great extreme subgenres of metal, death and black metal. Obviously, they played many, many subgenres. They were a truly eclectic band, touching on things that could be thrash, or could be black, or could be death, or could even be avant garde, even glam metal. It all began in early 1982 when a young Thomas Gabriel Fisher adopted the pseudonym Tom G. Warrior and joined forces with bassist and vocalist Urs Sprenger, also known as Steve Warrior, and drummer Pete Stratton to form the band Hammerhead. Although they wouldn't last long with this name and would change it to Hellhammer, they started playing a raw, fast-paced, aggressive sound, a product of Fisher's fascination and idolization of the hardcore punk group Discharge. Hellhammer managed to record a few demos and an EP during a short period of two years which was enough to influence an entire generation of extreme bands. In the last months of Hellhammer, bassist Martin Eric Ain joined the band and began a musical friendship with Thomas Gabriel. Just a couple of months after the release of their legendary EP, Apocalyptic Raids, in March 84, the two decided that Hellhammer was limiting their shared musical interests and left the band, dissolving it almost immediately and starting the story of another group that would be equally or perhaps more influential, Celtic Frost. They were joined by Stephen Priestley, an old acquaintance from Hellhammer days, and quickly signed with the German label Noise Records. In just a few days, they would record their debut album, the iconic and legendary Morbid Tales. Many of Fisher's fans immediately thought this album was a logical continuation of Hellhammer's work, something that initially didn't please Fisher or Martin, because their idea in creating Celtic Frost was to break away from Hellhammer's sonic personality and experiment a bit more. Still, this first record is a perfect showcase of metal taken to the extreme of that time, and was successful enough in the underground metal scene to allow them to tour beyond their native Switzerland in neighboring Germany and Austria. By the end of that year, Priestley left the drums and Reed St. Mark, an American, joined them in early 1985. They immediately started composing what would be their next release, and in August of that year, they released the EP Emperor's Return. With a sound akin to what German thrash metal bands were displaying to promote the EP, Celtic Frost took their first promotional photographs, showcasing an aesthetic and an image that would greatly influence the black metal scene a couple of years later. This work received praise from fans yet again. Nevertheless, Eric Ain separated from the band for a few months and missed the recording of Celtic Frost's second album, which many consider their masterpiece, Two Megatherion, released in October 85. Another iconic element of the album would be its legendary cover, made by the renowned Swiss artist H.R. Geiger, known for his work on the design of the xenomorph from the movie Alien. Feeling drawn to the dark nature of the group's music, he managed to design one of the most admired album covers in metal history. The album was completely admired, especially for its perfect blend of elements from genres that hadn't even been fully established yet, like black, doom, death metal, and those tied to ambient music. This record is hailed as a total influence on the development of those subgenres and, according to some, should be included as one of the first black metal albums. Martin Eric would return shortly after the release of this album and would be part of the tour that took them across Europe and North America. After this, they recorded the very short EP Tragic Serenades, which only included three songs and aimed to re-record two of the songs from To Megatherion with Eric's powerful and notable bass. In 1987, they began composing their next full-length album, the also legendary Into the Pandemonium. This record would showcase the band's first major sound change, moving away from the frontal aggression of their previous albums and displaying experimental elements, such as industrial sounds, symphonic elements, and the inclusion of female voices, 
All of this made this album influential not only in the extreme metal genres, but also in the future avant-garde metal branch, even being considered one of its first examples, coining the term. Although the album was praised critically, the subsequent North American tour caused a series of economic and personal problems among the group members. This was compounded by a poor relationship with their record label, causing the group to abruptly and unexpectedly dissolve. But merely six months later, Fisher decided to contact former drummer Stephen Priestley and hire bassist Kurt Victor Bryant and guitarist Oliver Amberg to reform Celtic Frost. What followed was one of the most controversial, abrupt, and unexpected style changes in metal history. The result of that reunion was the infamous 1988 album Cold Lake, entirely inclined toward a more traditional heavy metal sound and with a 100% glam image like that of other popular bands of the moment. Although Cold Lake gained some popularity in the United States, it was hated from the start by critics and traditional fans of the group, who found it almost unthinkable that a band like Celtic Frost would sell out in such a way. Currently, the album has some defenders arguing that it has some well-crafted heavy sound songs, but even Tom G. Warrior disowns it, calling it the worst thing he did in his life, and possibly the worst heavy music album ever created. It didn't take long for Cold Lake to be removed from the group's official catalog and is considered a collector's item. After that event, Fisher revamped the band, dismissing guitarist Oliver Amberg and marking the return of Martin Eric Ain. With the primary duo of the group reunited, they returned to the aggressive sound of Celtic Frost with the 1990 album Vanity Nemesis, an album close to thrash metal with touches of doom and gothic rock. The album was a timid return to the group's characteristic sounds, but this didn't prevent it from being rejected by critics and largely ignored by the public. Fisher stated that this was due to the loss of credibility that Cold Lake produced in the Celtic Frost name, leading to the group's second dissolution after a 1992 compilation called Parched with Thirst Am I and Dying. This breakup would last the rest of the decade until late 2001, when Tom G. Warrior and Eric Ain joined forces again to write music. This process took a few years, during which they recruited Franco Sessa on drums and Errol Unala on guitar, and after a struggle to secure funding, they managed to release their comeback album in 2006, Monotheist. The highly anticipated return of the group made the album admired, and as a result, they embarked on their longest world tour, covering Europe, the United States, and Asia, touring alongside Typo Negative as special guests. In early 2008, the group began writing material again, but on April 9th of that year, Thomas Gabriel Fisher posted a message on the group's website announcing his departure from the band. Eric Ain and the other members quickly affirmed that it wouldn't make sense to record without Fisher, and a few months later, Celtic Frost ceased to exist. That same year, Fisher formed the group Trypticon, and although the latter wouldn't last long, Trypticon is still active, having released the albums Eperistera Damone in 2010 and Milana Chasmata in 2014. Meanwhile, Martin Eric Ain worked on some albums as a guest until he passed away from a heart attack at the age of 50 in 2017, closing all possibilities of a classic Celtic Frost reunion. Nonetheless, according to Fisher, Trypticon is the legitimate successor delegated by Celtic Frost, finding great acceptance among metal audiences and being responsible for carrying on the enormous legacy of one of the most influential and important metal bands in history.